To begin our program, it's my pleasure to introduce you to the Science Philanthropy Alliance and what we do. I'll also invite one of our external science advisors, Mark Kastner, to join me in providing more context in history for the Alliance's work and science philanthropy overall. Mark was president of the Alliance starting in 2015 before transitioning to an external science advisor position in 2020. Prior to leading the Alliance, Mark had a distinguished career in a variety of senior positions at MIT, where he's the Donner Professor of Physics Emeritus. And today he's an adjunct professor of physics at Stanford University. As one of the Alliance's past presidents, Mark can speak to how the Alliance has grown in its, since its founding 10 years ago and share some case studies highlighting our advising work. But I'll start by taking a look at the role of philanthropic funding for science in the United States over the past few decades. The data shown here are based on a series of surveys from the National Science Foundation going back to the 1950s. The upper line in blue shows basic research expenditures from federal sources at universities and nonprofit institutions as a percentage of the total over the last seven decades. The red line, which is increasing, is particularly striking as this is the combination of higher education funds and nonprofit and philanthropic funds for science. By 2020, this number exceeded $25 billion, or approximately 42% of the total funding for basic research at universities and research institutes. Business and state and local government, the gray and green lines, contributed only a small portion of the funding for basic research at these institutions. Let's focus on the 2020 time point of these data released as an estimate by the National Science Foundation last February. The data are shown here as a cross section of funding by source. In blue, you can see that the federal share of $29 billion now provides less than half of the total support, while the bright red, yellow, and dark red quadrants reflect the contributions of higher education nonprofit funding at research institutes and current philanthropic support to universities, which sits at $5.1 billion. This chart doesn't include gifts designated by individual donors for research, which are reported separately to NSF along with other funding sources. <clears throat> One thing to keep in mind as we interpret these data is that many of the 14 point $3 billion of higher education institutional funds are derived from, from endowments that are philanthropic in origin, which we refer to as legacy philanthropy. Endowment returns provide substantial support for capital improvements, faculty salaries, and support for researchers and labs, as well as graduate students and postdocs. An ongoing empirical analysis by researchers at UC San Diego indicates that at least one third of higher education institution funds are legacy philanthropy. Overall, philanthropy is a surprisingly large and rapidly growing source of funds for science in the US and other countries too. The story in this figure is a work in progress. One of the goals for the Alliance is to get a better handle on the numbers for philanthropic giving. We'll do this in partnership with others like the National Science Foundation's National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics, centers that have a similar goal. There are elements of science philanthropies that differentiate it from funding provided by other sectors and sources, such as government, industry, or universities. This means that philanthropic support can serve as a buffer against the fluctuation of federal science budgets or plateaus or reductions in federal funds like those we observed in the previous data. But how can philanthropists give effectively in order to build a new future on a foundation of scientific discoveries? That's the question. Philanthropy can invest in untested ideas, support early career scientists, engage newly formed teams and institutes, and for some, even develop novel funding models. 
This can include taking a long-term approach, supporting scientific research over an extended period for years or even decades that can culminate in new discoveries. That support can go to a new generation, betting on younger and more diverse populations of scientists at broader sets of institutions and enabling them to make high impact contributions with extended payoffs. Today, philanthropists are conceiving new ways to engage the public in designing research. They're scaling efforts through partnerships and through open science. They can work collaboratively as an alliance on projects requiring enhanced funding, including leveraging investments made by other sectors. And though we're focusing our conversations today around US-based trends and organizations, all these considerations and opportunities remain important in an international context too. While members of the Science Philanthropy Alliance may fund many aspects of science, including research culture, science education, science communication, what unites them is their focus on investing in fundamental science. This can be research that is curiosity-driven, use-inspired, or both. Discovery science is driven by a desire to understand nature at its most fundamental level. The scientists working in the space often do not initially envision the ultimate use of their discoveries. Sometimes the resulting discoveries reveal fundamental principles that ripple across science, technology, and imagination, revolutionizing old ideas. This can happen quickly or after a long time. There's a natural tendency today to want quick results to address important global challenges. Yet such results can be based on decades of prior research, which need to be creatively synthesized and focused to obtain the desired applications. It's increasingly recognized that discovery and its uses co-evolve and their successes and challenges catalyze each other. Realizing the harmony between basic and translational research some philanthropists fund both. The Alliance represents a collection of members, each with its own portfolio of interests. What ties us together is an understanding that scientific discovery at its most fundamental level is essential for enabling our responses to immediate and future challenges. And now I'll hand things over to Mark to share a bit more about the history of this field in the Alliance and some examples of how we put these principles into practice. Mark. Thank you, Franz. Uh, let me start by uh, giving you some context about the evolution and history of science philanthropy with some examples highlighted on this slide. American wealth and philanthropy grew enormously in the industrial age uh, and supported higher education in science. This, for, for example, the Smithsonian Institute was founded in 1840, and Andrew Carnegie published The Gospel of Wealth in 1889. Many new private universities were created between the 1870s and 1930. Um, this was a period when philanthropy was probably the most important con contributor to uh, supporting basic science. Uh, after Vannevar Bush published his report, Science, the Endless Frontier, in post-World War II, 1945, philanthropy's role was dramatically reduced because the federal government took over the role of funding all aspects of science adequately. For example, the Rockefeller Foundation ceased their science funding in 1960. As part of the new digital information age, we have seen a reemergence of science philanthropy since the 1990s. An example of this is the Giving Pledge launched in 2010, in which many philanthropists have pledged to give away the majority of their wealth to charitable causes, either in their lifetimes or in their wills. Philanthropists continue to sign this pledge with 236 signatories as of 2022. A few years, few years after the Giving Pledge was created, the Science Philanthropy Alliance was founded by six foundations and philanthropists committed to funding basic science. 
And I'll talk now more about how the Science Philanthropy Alliance has grown over the last decade. The Alliance was founded in 2013 to increase philanthropic support for basic science with the intention of offsetting a potential flattening of government funding. You saw this in the first slide that Franz showed you. Today, science philanthropy plays a critical role that is synergistic with other funding sources. The Alliance has grown from the initial six foundations and philanthropists to 37 members today. In addition to its members, there are many foundations and philanthropists that the Alliance advises, often confidentially. Here you can see the growth of Alliance in terms of the number of its members and advisees since its founding nearly 10 years ago. Since 2016, the primary strategy of the Science Philanthropy Alliance has been to um, provide customized, um, has, has been to increase philanthropic funding by providing customized advice to philanthropists on opportunities and structures for, for supporting scientific research. We began this advising work because philanthropists often face challenges when funding science that we can help to overcome through personalized advising and connections. We hired the first full-time advisor to lead this work in 2017 and began adding science fellows and more advising staff in the following years. The Alliance now completes 60 to 80 advising projects per year. The Alliance's high numbers of advisees and completed advising projects in 2021 is related in part to the increase in philanthropists responding to the COVID-19 pandemic more decisively and with increased amount of funding. I'll share a few examples of our advising work later in my remarks. This slide highlights the variety of services that the Alliance provides to philanthropists and foundations. Advising is at the core of our work as indicated by the large numbers of advising projects completed per year. Examples of advising work include connecting philanthropists to science advisors and providing recommendations for funding models. Much of our work is fo for, focused on connecting funders with each other, uh, including other philanthropic funders and connecting them with scientists and institutions, but we only do that at the funder's request. And other potential partners, such as government agencies to explore public-private partnerships. We inform philanthropic funders through member practice reports and by sharing news about science funding, such as the science funding data that France presented at the beginning of this talk. We also convene funders for workshops in fields such as ocean science, influenza, energy storage, and data science. And we occasionally host regional uh, science philanthropy events as we did in Chicago, Austin, Texas, and London. To provide an example of our, advise, of our advising work, I'd like to highlight one of our early successes. Mark Zuckerberg and Priscilla Chan referred to the Alliance, were referred to the Alliance in 2015, and they were among the first philanthropists advised by the Alliance. We advised and supported Chan and Zuckerberg and their staffs as they identified funding models, formed a science advisory board, and communicated the launch of their new initiative. When the Chan Zuckerberg initiative was announced in 2017, the Alliance was publicly acknowledged for its role in guiding the initiative's focus on basic research. Several philanthropists have been referred to the Alliance by research institutions so that we can help encourage their giving through our advising services. 
For example, philanthropist Ross Brown, founder of the Ross Brown Family Foundation, was referred to the Alliance by the development team at Caltech and by academic leadership from the University of Chicago when he was interested in committing the majority of the proceeds from the sale of his half billion dollar company to supporting scientific research. When I first talked to him, he didn't know where to begin. The Alliance helped Ross narrow his focus, identify what past giving he particularly enjoyed, and introduced him to a number of foundation and academic leaders for advice. The Packard Foundation allowed him to observe the selection process for their fellows, and eventually he designed a similar program, one where universities are tasked with nominating mid-career fellows in physics and chemistry. We also worked to understand what else was important to him, which included not wanting to take on uh, the management of a big grant making operation. Ross and his advisory board, which I chair, are about to announce the third cohort of Brown Fellows for a total of 12 fellows to date. Um, each fellow gets about $2 million over five years. So that's a total commitment so far of $24 million. Each receives five years of support to pursue blue sky research questions of their own choosing. Ross's journey is detailed in our, on our website in a series of blog posts by the Alliance's Senior Director of Advising Services, Sue Merrilies. A final example shows one way in which we identify important areas of research that are underfunded. Shirley Tillman, former president of Princeton, and an external science advisor to the Alliance, led two workshops on infectious disease in 2020 to identify funding gaps for foundations. She convened 20 scientific experts on infectious disease, and they collaborated to identify several areas of research that needed private funding in order to pick, put together a holistic picture of COVID-19 and other coronavirus diseases. The Alliance then convened funders interested in infectious disease to learn more about the resulting funding opportunities. Major infectious disease funders expressed that the event advanced their knowledge of research priorities in this space and have since committed millions in funding. With these examples of the Alliance successes, I'll now turn back over to France to talk more about the Alliance today. Great. As Mark shared, the Alliance was founded 10 years ago by six foundations and philanthropists committed to funding basic science and helping other philanthropists do the same. We now have a long history of advising foundations and philanthropists, and Mark has shared some great examples and case studies of that work. As of January 2022, before we embarked on a new strategic plan, the Alliance had already supported more than 65 philanthropists and foundations, completed approximately 250 advising projects, and influenced nearly $3.7 billion in funding. Today, the Alliance has dozens of philanthropic organizations among its members. As the Alliance has grown, the benefits to participating members have expanded. Alliance member organizations and their staff at all levels benefit <clears throat> from being part of a community of philanthropic funders with a shared dedication to discovery science. The Alliance convenes funders, encourages the exploration of collaborations and partnerships, facilitates the identification of funding opportunities, and works with members to develop and refine promising practices around topics of shared interests. The Alliance is guided by an advisory board that maintains governance, advocates for philanthropic support for science, facilitates collaboration, and promotes our shared values. The current advisory board comprises the leaders of 10 member organizations and myself as Alliance president. 
Our newest board member is Sushma Raman, who just started as new president and CEO of the Heising Science Foundation, which has had a longstanding board position. You'll see many of our advisory board members during the course of this gathering as moderators, panelists, and discussion leaders. Additionally, the Alliance's distinguished cohort of external science advisors advise on science funding strategies and opportunities in their areas of expertise. They refer philanthropists to the Alliance, they serve as public representatives and champions, and they work closely with our staff to advance the Alliance's mission. You'll have here the opportunity uh, have the opportunity to hear from a lot of these advisors during the course of this two-day meeting as they serve as panel moderators and discussion hosts. And you'll also meet a few of our internal staff from the Alliance who bring vast experience in development and research to our advising and strategic in initiatives. All of these stakeholders and more contribute to the development of our new strategic plan, which was just finished this past June. The plan is envisioned to tackle the big questions facing science philanthropy and the future of the Alliance. And you can find the whole plan on our website. Its development included discussions around attracting funders, international engagement, partnerships, advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in science, assessing grant making impact and effectiveness, positioning and promoting science philanthropy through communication, and the value proposition for members in the Alliance. The resulting plan is meant to guide our activities over the next few years. The Alliance envisions a world that increasingly supports and realizes the full benefit of scientific discovery and believes that a key pathway to that world is our mission to advance scientific discovery through visionary philanthropy. To realize its vision and mission, the Alliance works on behalf of philanthropic science funders. Additional beneficiaries may include partner organizations, other science funders, and scientists, leaders, and research and development staff at universities and research institutes, as many of you are. Our strategic plan also outlines our commitment to core values around curiosity, collaboration, diversity, equity, and inclusion. All of these are central to our work as we strive to unlock the power and promise of science philanthropy, enabling future benefits for people and our planet. Our strategic plan has two principal goals. The first is to focus on new philanthropy, by attracting more philanthropists to science through our advising and outreach with funders, and also by positioning and promoting science philanthropy as a key sector of the research enterprise. The other goal of our new strategic plan is more impactful and effective science philanthropy. Our efforts to advance this goal entail sharing science funding trends, fostering partnerships for increased impact and effectiveness, identifying funding opportunities, and facilitating shared learning and collaboration. The demonstrated success of the Alliance in bringing new funders into science and into the Alliance has made this new goal possible, creating demand among member organizations for more learning, networking, collaboration, and collective impact. Achieving this new goal of more impactful and effective science philanthropy as an alliance requires responding to member interests and priorities. In recent years, diversity, equity, and inclusion have emerged as priority topics. They are key considerations in the alliance's work to advance and advise philanthropists, facilitate partnerships, highlight funding opportunities, and host convenings. Our members and other philanthropic funders are advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion through their grant making and partnerships. And you'll hear more about this work in a panel moderated by Shirley Tillman tomorrow. The Alliance also hosts shared interest groups focused on measurement, evaluation, and learning, providing opportunities for members to learn and discuss so they can assess the impact of their investments. You'll also hear more tomorrow about our members' shared interest in the intersection of science and society and science communication in panels moderated by Alliance external science advisors, Fleming Krim and Tom Cech. <laughs>